everybody. Welcome to the new video from Tracy's Homestead. I'm going to be talking about garden planning today. And lucky you, I cannot find my notebook where I did all of my garden planning. So you get to repeat it with me from scratch. Now you won't see my f beautiful face on this as much because most of it's going to be pointed down at our planning area. But I wanted to invite you to learn with me. And if this is your first or second garden, you're fairly new to it, this will be very, very helpful. If you've already done this before, um, still watch because you might come up with something, you might hear something new that you hadn't thought of before. Um, but we're going to talk about garden planning and how I do my garden planning. And uh, I'll try and keep it short, but you know me. I like to tell stories and get a little long-winded, so, all right, here we go. So in my opinion, the first thing that you need to do is just take stock of what you do have. Now, this is not my first year gardening, so I already have all of this. You may not have all of these seeds, but still, write down what you do have, and uh, you can go from there. Once you have everything Listed, I like to do it in groups, so I have all my nightshades, which are tomatoes, tomatillos, eggplant, peppers. I like to just do a little square around them because they are going to need similar growing conditions, okay? My roots, like radishes, onions, beets, carrots, uh, potatoes are not on this list because I plant them in a different section. I put the little square around this. These are grains. I've got rice, corn. Uh, popcorn and quinoa. It's my first year going to grow rice and quinoa, so just so you know. Then I've got squash. Now I know that I'm going to have to plant my squash in my front yard this year because my backyard is absolutely infested with squash vine borer beetles and squash bugs and it just decimates it. Okay. Then I've got my greens. Okay. And my brassicas, which are broccoli um, cabbage, if you have cauliflower, um, there's a couple of Brussels sprouts, but I just have broccoli and cabbage because we don't really eat the other stuff. Climbing and vining things like peas, green beans, watermelon, and cucumbers, and then herbs and flowers. This helps you to see what you're going to need to put where. All right, let's go to the next step. One mistake that a lot of people make when planting their garden is they just decide to plant whatever they would love to grow, but it might not be as successful for you um, as uh, than if you approach it in a different way. So what I do is I think about what my weekly grocery list, both fresh produce and anything canned or pickled that I buy every week or every couple weeks, and then I write that out. So, for example, up here right now I have lettuce, carrots, tomato, cucumber because I really love to have salads. Salads are great. I also weekly usually end up buying things like broccoli. Um, every so often I get some cabbage because I like sauerkraut. I like to eat pickles and I like to make pickles. I also enjoy berries and things like that, apples and uh so I'm going to write all of those down and bring you right back. All right, so I've written down all that I could think of. Now, I might come back and add some more, and so you, so might you, and that's fine. Um, and now, this is the stuff I would shop for pretty much every week, or every couple weeks, or even some things are seasonal, um, where I, I'm only going to get um, squash when it's fall. But I still wrote it down there because I know that I eat that. I know my family eats it and I know I want it. Now we're going to go through and decide what will grow where I live. Okay. Um, and this, sorry, my baby's wiggling the camera. So I also included canned things like salsa, spaghetti sauce, canned beans, corn, and fruit. Because I use those frequently 
and they are things that I could grow and preserve. Teresa, can you leave it alone? All right, so let's cross off some of the things that are not going to grow in Iowa. Lemons, not going to happen. Bananas, um, let's see, oranges, and then there's another thing on my list here at the bottom. It says sweet potato. We have tried for two years to grow sweet potatoes, and I am a hopeless uh, optimist, so I will probably try and grow it again, but honestly, sweet potato is not likely. Now, if I was going to start a garden, I would love to tell you that I would just pick maybe two, three, four, five of these and uh, start with that, but that's not true. When I first started my gardens, I planted everything I could possibly plant, and honestly, it was great. Um, I know a lot of people say, don't jump in with both legs, just tiptoe in, but honestly, I just jumped in, and I loved it, so... Okay, I'll show you what we're going to do with this. Now that you've got your list, what we're going to do is decide what's going to grow best in your area and what you're going to skip. So I went ahead and circled things in green if it is reasonable for me to grow it, and purple if it's not real that reasonable. I've tried growing beans, and although it was fun, I can use that garden space for other things, uh, black, like black beans and pintos and stuff. Canned fruit is kind of half and half, because some of it I can grow, and some of it I can't. Um, I decided not to grow pears or peaches, because I have a neighbor who supplies pears to me because she does not like pears. And so I pick her tree and take care of it for her, and uh, then I get the pears. Peaches, honestly, they just don't grow very well up here. And I think I'm making a call on the sweet potatoes. The reason that we're going to do it like this is because you wouldn't go to a clothing store and say, oh, I love this dress, even though it's a size 12 and I'm a size 16. Um, I'm just going to buy it anyway. Or you wouldn't go to the clothing store and say, ah, these size 8 shoes are perfect for me and they fit me, I'm going to buy 17 pairs. Like, th that doesn't make sense. Um, also, if you know that you are going to be wearing socks every day, you're not going to get one pair and wash it every day and wear it again. That's not enough. You need to get the right amount and the right kind, and you need to make sure it's going to fit what you actually eat and the amount that you actually eat and that's how you're going to decide the amount that you're going to plant or the ratio of your garden that is going to be something we eat more tomatoes than anything else so most of my garden is going to be planted up in tomatoes a few more notes on what to plant and how to get that organized and then we're going to move on to mapping and uh, organizing your garden. If you need to order any seeds that are not on the list of what you have, make sure you make a note of that. I have a few places that I like to get seeds um, for quality. My top ones are MI Gardener and uh, Burpee, and you can get those like in any like Home Depot type places. Um, and then I like St. Clair's Seeds. It's, um, it's a Catholic family that sells seeds. Those are the ones I like for quality. Um, for <laughs> uh, cheapness, I get stuff at Dollar Tree. And I also save my own seeds, which is the cheapest ever. And it, uh, it's also pretty decent quality. Um, sometimes you can run into a little bit of hybridizing that is confusing, but I, I still use it. Tomato to tomato, whatever. Then you're going to want to look at, do I want to start my own or do I want to buy starts or plants? If you're new to gardening, there's different ways to start a garden. You can start from seed, you can start from plants. Um, oftentimes buying starts is easier and it gets your feet in the water and helps you to be more comfortable with it. Um, starting your own seeds is usually cheaper, so weigh the options and decide which way you want to go. All right.
and make sure you look at the requirement of each plant to see if it's better to do direct sowing or doing star starts, etc. For example, carrots. Um, you gotta direct sow those. You can't start them in the house and then like uproot them and then plant them because the root is the food. So if you are literally ripping the food part off, then the food part's not gonna grow well and they just don't transplant well. They, they do so much better just direct sown. Lots of seeds are like that. If you get packs, you can look at the back and see what it says. Always look at the back of the seeds and uh, see what they say. Even if you end up not following what they tell you to do, it's a good place to start. All right, let's get to mapping. You, I'm gonna let you know before I show you on, I, I recorded a thing on the, on the screen there. Um, I use either Google Maps or Google Earth to get like an aerial view because right now it's super duper snowy and sometimes I just need to see how it laid out so that I can remember. So I'll do a little video on that and then I'll bring you back to mapping. Using Google Earth or Google Maps is a great way to envision your backyard from an aerial view. This is my own backyard and you can see although the image is a little outdated I can use this image to measure my perimeter and area and to get a good view of how I want to use it. Having the perimeter and area mapped helps you to envision how you want your garden to flow. It's also helpful if you need to know how much fencing you need to buy in order to fence it in against rabbits and things. All right, welcome back to mapping. This is an aerial map of my garden. My garden is about 30 by 30, so each of these squares are 10 by 10. So 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30. And in here I also have any permanent fixtures written in ink so that as I'm working with pencil to move things around, then it doesn't erase the permanent fixture. This is a raised bed my husband built and it just stays there. Um, so I, I work around it. And this is my compost bin and there's a door that's near the chicken coop and a door over here. So let me show you how I kind of map things out. To start with, my soil is clay, and I mean clay, very, very clay. As a matter of fact, let me pause this. All right, let me show you how clay my soil is. I made this out of my soil. My soil is very clay. I only had to rinse a little bit of actual soil out of it in order to use this as clay. All right, now that that's established. Because my soil is clay, we've had to do a lot of amending on it. And so one year we, um, we spread out some really good soil starting here and it got about to here. And then the next year I raked everything loose up that was dry and I had a burn pit about right here and then spread it out as much as I could, okay? And then this year, right before fall, I took all the well composted stuff and spread it as much as I could, okay? So I need to kind of loosely color those in or at least draw some borders to show where all of the nutritious soil is so that I can place my plants where they should be. I also need to show where the shade is, okay? So, I'll go ahead and use a green, and I'll show, matter of fact, I wonder if I have enough different greens that I could kind of, yeah, we'll do a yellow too, um, to show where the different stages of nutrition are. Here we go. All 
All right, so these are my, are my most nutritious soil areas. And so the things I want to produce really well are gonna go in these areas, but I also have to plan for shade. So in the morning, I have a, um, I have a shed right about here or so. And then I have a lot of pine trees way over here. Um, so this whole section gets a, a decent amount of shade. There's also a mulberry tree that's growing outside my garden there. It's kind of small, but it still does add some shade. My neighbor has a fence here. And it's a privacy fence, so it's going to offer a little bit of shade, uh, it, but it's to the north. So I have to keep that in mind. Um, and then my house is about over here, so I have to keep that in mind. So let me mark in where the shade is going to be so that I can use that also. All right, so now you can see where everything is in my garden. I recommend that you do something similar. Go and observe your soil if you can, or try to remember it from the previous season. Try to remember where you saw, number one, the most weeds. They love nutrition. And then if you just let them go and they rotted back into the earth, then yeah, you're gonna have to deal with weeds, but you're also gonna have very rich soil there. If it looks arid and dry, then that's not great soil. So what you're gonna wanna do is put your favorite crops in the best soil. And so I'm going to try to put most of mine in this area while still kind of adhering to a grid so that it's easy to maneuver around. And yeah. All right. So let's just get into that. Tomatoes are my most important crop. So tomatoes and peppers. And so I'm going to be putting them in the best places that I possibly can. In order to, to decide how many of each thing you're going to plant, what I recommend is this. Um, let me give you a short, a short thing. Okay, let's say I'm going to use um, about two quarts of tomato product every week. Um, so two times 52 is 104. 104 quarts of tomato per year. And in order to do that, you have to find out how many, um, plant, or how many quarts does each plant produce. And then you have to get that many plants. Um, I have discovered that because of my soil quality not being super great, each plant produces about a quart. So I'm going to need about 100 quarts, or 100 plants, 100 tomato plants. So I'm going to need 100 of them. And now I do kind of plant mine kind of cramped. Um, but again, because of my soil and my microclimate, it works for me. So, <clears throat> where are we going to do the tomatoes? We're going to go around here in our best soil. I like to lay out where my pathways are going to be first. I have a, a pathway that goes here and then it goes straight down the middle to this next door and it needs to be big enough for me to get my wheelbarrow in in and out okay and then uh, what I've done is the cul-de-sac style rows so um, basically you you go down in here or let's see I think I was gonna fit too down here I'll just do it like this to show you okay basically you can plant something here and all the way around and then you can plant another thing there and all the way around and you kind of do it like cul-de-sac. So let me draw this out and I'll bring you back. Okay. 
Now if you've got the climbers and the viners, uh, you want to make sure you're putting them where they're going to flourish. So I've got peas and I've got green beans, watermelon, and cucumbers. Now the watermelon is going to need a warmer area where it can climb. The beans are, they're honestly happy anywhere. Peas are going to want it a little bit cooler um, and cucumbers are pretty comfortable anywhere. Um, somewhere in the middle is best for them. So I have a couple um, trellises that I have set up as an A-frame over here. So I can use this area for cool climate uh, climbers. So I'm going to put in a little note here. Um, little A-frames. And this is where I'm going to put my peas. All right. My peas are going to be very happy over here because they are shaded from some of the hot sun and they have trellises that they can climb and um, the soil is not really amended over there but they don't seem to need very deep root systems so they'll be very comfortable over here. Um, I'm blessed in that I have the entire thing fenced and so that is built in for my beans. So I'm going to use the same color because it'll be easier. And I'm going to put my green beans in so that I know where to go with that. All right. I think that my green beans are going to go in a couple places that they went last time. Last year I had them along this fence and along this fence. And the bush beans did really well along this fence. So I'm probably going to plant them along this fence again, even though they say you should trade it up. I'm going to go ahead and just keep them there. So beans, beans, the musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you too. The more you too, the better you feel. So let's eat beans for every meal. They'll use this flat fence to climb up and they'll be very happy. Any more climbers that we've got? Watermelon and cucumber. Now, watermelon likes to vine out. Um, and it's a very thirsty plant. So you want to make sure that you're putting it in a place that has a lot of water availability. Now, I know from my history that my water comes from right over down here. And by the time I get over here, I'm kind of tired of watering. <laughs> so I'm probably going to end up putting my watermelon somewhere over here. Now, whether I'm going to allow it to climb or vine, I am not sure yet. Um, so I guess we'll just wait and see. But I'm going to go ahead and just kind of place my watermelon right here at the end. So this is about five by three or four feet. Okay, and that's going to be a pretty happy spot for some little baby watermelons. Near a fence, so if I want to have it climb and, uh, and tie it up, then I can. If I don't want to, I don't have to. Cucumbers are important to me. I make a ton of pickles every year. They're very important to me. I want them to have a place to climb. I'm probably going to put them across here. Okay. So. Oh, let's see. Do, do, do. Might as well go like this. And then I'll go right there. Cucumbers. Cucumbers, okay. The next thing that I'm going to be looking at um, 
I'm actually going to be looking at my greens because greens are kind that like to bolt um, and they need to have a slightly shadier spot so that they don't just go. Um, and so I'm planning on putting them in this area over here because it gets a little bit more shade, okay? Um, and I'm hoping that that will help them to not bolt so quickly. Now, I could, uh, this is south, I could save a little, little bit of room and plant my corn in a block over here, um, which would then make it so that my greens were more shaded. So I think that's what I will do. I'm going to leave about half of it for corn and about half of it here for the greens. So even though I've already used green to signify things, I'll just do it a little bit darker and I'll uh, go ahead and get all of my greens settled in here. Okay, um, I mentioned a moment ago that um, putting my corn in a block so that it can also shade my greens is going to be a good choice. So I'm going to go ahead and work on my grains. Now I do know that I'm planning on planting my quinoa in the front yard instead of the backyard. Um, and rice is probably going to be in the front yard too. So instead, I'm just going to go ahead and plant all of my eating corn, my sweet corn in this area. And I'll probably pick a different spot for the popcorn, just so they're a little less likely to um, cross-pollinate. But, I mean, honestly, it's probably going to happen. It's a small garden. 30 by 30 is small in regards to, like, pollination. So let's go ahead and put corn in here. All right. All of my root vegetables, because the soil is clay, are going to go in this raised bed because the soil is more loose. Uh, currently, I have garlic planted over here, but I and a few herbs, but I will probably be able to move that uh, because it should ripen and be ready to pick uh, by like midsummer. So I may be able to put a few things over there into the garlic area after the garlic has been pulled. But I'm gonna put all my roots in here. That means lots of onions. So honestly, I'm gonna take up most of this with onions. I am planning on planting probably at least 100 onions. I'm gonna to have to find my actual little um, notebook for that. All right, whole bunch of onions. I have lots of different kinds. And I need to also plant some beets and carrots and radishes. I could put the radishes in with the garlic. Radishes, um, onions, and then beets and carrots. Really, it would be nice to have more space, but we're gonna go ahead and try now. I will use more carrots than beets, so let's write carrots here. And we'll save beets for, we'll write beets down, but I might save it for later and move it around. All right. All right. Back to a green, we're going to do brassicas. Now, I have a tendency to have uh, cabbage moths that like to kill my stuff. Um, so I need to find a place that is gonna be, that I can put a little tunnel over um, to keep it comfortable. I'm going to end up putting my brassicas in this area over here. So that is broccoli and cabbage. Technically kale is a brassica, but kale is so prolific that the cabbage moths don't seem to kill it. They, they do attack it. But 
I don't usually need to cover it with anything, but at least it would be close. And so I could cover it if I need to. So brassicas, we're going to do broccoli and cabbage. And then it's going to need um, netting over it. Let's check to see what we've got left. Of course, the, all my nightshades, squash is going to be in the front. I've got my greens, my brassicas, my climbing of vining. I haven't done herbs yet. I've done my roots and I've done my greens. So I need to figure out my herbs and flowers, um, including the other ones that I want to add in, which are mostly herbs, and then and my nightshades. I'm going to go ahead and do my nightshades first. I've been saving these really healthy areas for them, so let's start mapping them out. All right, tomatoes. I'm going to be, I'm going to have a ton, so let's just, I'll just go ahead and write it in and you'll, you can watch me do it. All right, as you can see, I have a little bit left over here. It's about uh, four by five and another four by five or so. And so I think I'm going to use this. In the past, I probably would have used this for squash, but I can't put squash back here this time. So instead, I'm going to put my herbs over here. And the flowers I just kind of scatter. Wherever they grow, they grow. So let's get another color for herbs. Let's see. I've got a lot of this. Let's get this. For herbs, um, they do. it does not matter in what order they go. You can plant herbs any way you'd like. Um, I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more compost for it so that they're a little happier. But this, these sections are going to be my herbs. When you're planting a garden, one of the things that you want to work on is what companion plants are going to be good with it. Um, basically, if it's in a spaghetti sauce, it grows well together. If it's in a salsa, it grows well together. If you would eat it together, it, would, it grows well together. You can eat succotash, so it's like carrots and beans and things like that that go together. Um, corn works with that. If you would eat them together, then you can grow them together is the simplest way that I can explain that. So I hope that that part was pretty clear. And um, let me see what else I can help you with as far as garden planning. Here's a little bonus lesson. Let's say that you have a uh, raised bed or any kind of garden bed, and uh, it's about, oh, let's just say it's four feet by, I don't know, eight feet. I totally measured that on it, four feet by 10 feet. <laughs> we'll do that. Now, you have a couple options for planting. I'll make another one right down here. That'll be the same. Okay. So you can plant in a grid. One, two, three, four plants. And just go like that. And fill in the grid. Da, 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 da. Okay. But I don't plant this way. Um, because number one, plants don't grow in squares in the wild. Um, and yeah, plants don't grow in squares in the wild. I'm not using machinery to harvest this. I don't need straight lines. Instead, what I do is triangles. 
So one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And as you go on, you can see it's a higher density of planting. And you can get a lot more plants in the same space when you plant in triangles instead of squares. Another thing that you can consider doing is that if you have plants that are taller, for example, tomato plants, and you want to plant them, let's just say you're doing them in squares, you can plant in here basil or oregano. Can we watch maybe? Um, in a little bit, maybe. Or thyme or any of those other herbs that are kind of low to the ground. If you'd like to find out what your crop yield will be, you can find Harvest a Table and they explain what you can expect from different types of crop. Here you'll see the tomato. It says if you grow three to six plants of each variety per person, it'll yield eight to ten quarts. And the spacing is included as well. Some of the last things that you need to consider when planning your garden is how many plants you're going to be starting and whether you have room for that and how you'll be storing them once the harvest comes in. Um, I'm of the belief that you have as much room as you can make. Just because it seems like it's going to take a lot of room doesn't mean you can't store some canned goods under the spare bedroom uh, bed or something or put potatoes in the basement, or any number of things. I'm of the opinion that why not just go big? But it is still a consideration that you have to make. And uh, so over here I have, I, I found my notebook. All right, I have here how many plants I'm going to be starting. Um, and then the measurements of the trays and how many are in each and then how many how much square footage how much square footage I'm gonna need for the trays to go in on shelves so that I know what my light requirements are for starting how much soil I'm gonna need there's a lot of math involved so uh, be ready for that and then yeah I know if you want to hold a pencil? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That one? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. So, you need to be able to decide if you have enough room for starting things or if you want to go a different route with that. You also need to um, make sure you have enough space to store any harvest that you're not going to just let it go to waste. Um, learning how to can, learning how to dehydrate, or getting the supplies needed for freezing it. Um, make sure that the garden is something that you can maintain if you're the only one working it and it's your first year. Um, weeds are going to pop up, so you're going to have to either manage the weeds or manage your expectations of your garden, uh, one or the other. So, and then kind of as a last little thing, you're going to probably go through so many different versions of your garden. Since I found my notebook, I can kind of show you. Here's one version I had. Okay. And then later I came up with a completely different version. When I thought, oh, why would I put my tomatoes there? I don't have a whole lot of nutrition there. And I, I need to have a better spot for that. And so then... I came up with this, which still uses my cul-de-sac style, which I do like very much because it gives you extra growing room on the ends. Um, and then, of course, the one that we worked on today, which I also like. So, chances are, I'll go through my different versions and decide which one I like best, which one has merits, which one has things I need to change and do something that's sort of in the middle but 
this gives you a lot of hope during that January, February time. And uh, starting seeds also encourages. Yeah. Plus, it's a fun reason to sharpen all the color pencils and color code. Right, Teresa? Oh, you want a color now? Okay. Teresa? Oh, you want a color? I'll get you a page. So, Teresa, do you want to say goodbye to everybody? <gasps> Whoa! Uh-oh! <laughs> Are you going to go get them? Did they fall? Here. You want to go get them? Or do you want color? Yeah, you want color. You can go get them later. All right. Thank you very much for joining me as we talked about garden planning. You can go as deep into this as you want. I do recommend that you check out other YouTubers, that home, uh, homesteaders at YouTube. Or, I don't know. Would, homesteaders at YouTube or YouTubers at Homestead? Anyway. Homesteading Family um, is a channel that just put out a garden planning video, too. And they, like, like if, if gardening is a stage like one to ten this is aimed toward like level one two three my video theirs is like four five six if you've done this before but you want to get a little bit more into it their garden planning video is really good um it's something that i really benefited from so definitely go and check out homesteading family um i know three rivers homestead uh, Jessica is also planning her garden and she likes to write it all out. Um, if you are on Instagram, Ruth Ann Zim, I believe she has YouTube too, but I honestly, I can't remember the, her, the name on YouTube or if it's the same. Ruth Ann Zim, um, prefers to do kind of a free for all for her gardening. She, it's just so ingrained that she just knows where she's going to do it and she just does it. So that's another option. If you want to just wing it, it's up to you. Thank you very much again for watching. And um, please subscribe. Um, as of making the video, I'm two subscribers away from 100. And um, it would just be a real confidence boost to get two more subscribers. That's beautiful. Can I see it? <gasps> Picture. Good job. God bless you, and we'll see you next week with our seed starting video. Bye-bye.